Welcome, Internet, to the Pixel Play Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast for gamers by gamers. I am one of your co-hosts, Kalen, a.k.a. Catastrophe, joined as always by my co-hosts, Adam at CS Radical and Chris at Gin and Chris. This week's episode, we're going to be talking all about Sony's successful, in my opinion, state of play. If you like that and you want to see more, we post episodes every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and a little bonus side quest for YouTube subscribers uh, on Fridays at 5 p.m. If you're not subscribed, go over to YouTube and hit subscribe. It helps us out a lot. And if you are listening to us anywhere else, but feel free to leave a review at the bottom. It greatly helps us out, gives us some validity in what we do, and is all tied to our self-worth as human beings. So it really helps us out if you do that. With that being said, guys, how are you guys all doing? How's everyone doing? What's everyone been playing? Me? I have actually not been... I've been playing games, but I haven't been, like, in one like just mm. a hardcore. I'm in that thing where it's like, I've got like three games on the go and they're all games you can hop in, play for 30 minutes and then hop out. Um, one of them being Midnight Suns due to Adam getting me all hooked on that. I'm not Really, sorry. really good game. No, no, you shouldn't be. It's an amazing game. Um, I'm 30 hours in, but like, I feel like I haven't really started. I don't know, it's weird. Has it like, told I you you're in Act 2 yet? No. Then, then yeah, only... you definitely haven't done much. <laughs> <laughs> in act one of three and it's been 30 hours i don't have time i for only shit. just started act three and i've been playing way longer than you <laughs> oh i may just like burn through all the story i don't even know that's kind of like where to, i'm at uh, now actually <laughs> i'm at the point yeah. where i'm like i don't think i need to do anything else <laughs> it's not that i don't want to do all the extra stuff it's like i'm 30 hours in and i feel like i haven't gone anywhere yet and i have fucking games to play so <laughs> i gotta do this but the important um, thing is your heroes are fucking op probably extremely this i'm just i just like oh no story mission oh hard difficulty sure like, who have you gravitated to so far aside from your main character of course uh so yeah hunter main character and then nico um uh, very much like you and blade i don't know what it is with blade, blade really warmed up to me over the course of the game like it used to be that it was basically the protagonist nico and spider-man were like the defaults and then with the D the DLC missions have a lot more blade oriented focus because it's all vampire related. And I started to realize, holy shit, that he is OP. You can re cause yeah. he can deal a lot of damage real fast and also heal really fast, depending on which ability you're using. Now, of and course I have the DLC characters. Storm is insanely OP. If you, if you allow her to be, because her gimmick is that every time all of her cards have what's called next turn, that every, if you, every time you hold the card for another turn, it adds effects to it. And some oh, of them yeah. include damage boosts. So there are cards that, like, you can just hold, and all of a sudden you just have a card in your hand that has a 1,000 damage on it. You're just like, whenever I'm ready, something's <laughs> dying. <laughs> <laughs> you choose one of those minions that don't even have a health bar. They die in one hit no matter what. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You don't waste it on the peasants. They just get swept by a tsunami. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing that, um, and I've also been playing Story of Seasons, Something of Olive Town. I don't even remember the name of this one. It is not my favorite Story not of Harvest Seasons. Not Harvest Moon, that's far. what we're calling it. Yeah, not Harvest Moon. I love Story of Seasons. Like, I love, like, it's still got a lot of the same feels, but this one, Olive Town one, they came out with, like, machines that you put on your farm, so you can take wood, and you put ten of them in the machine, and then they'll make lumber, but you're just waiting for these like hour cycles to go by so you can go over to this machine and it can only do 10 at a time. So you have like six machines on the farm and you keep going. And I'm like, I don't want to make silver ignits anymore. I don't want to make friggin' good lumber or whatever the hell I'm doing to repair a bridge. I want to grow some fucking like corn and sell it and be like, nice and go to bed. And then and go, maybe and go marry married. my waifu. Oh, I'm definitely marrying some waifu. Hottest girl ever works at the museum. None of it makes sense. <laughs> like she's a party girl that's like oh we open too early like what is this dialogue like this doesn't even make sense but whatever she's the hot girl so i went for it um but yeah i've been playing that on my switch it's just been like i i like just to play cozy games you know that's a cozy game thing um but today i decided to actually start trying to play a game i was like i need something that i can drop if i need to drop it because i don't know what to play and i don't want to get into something like if i go back into C cyberpunk right now i'm worried i won't stick with it i need to get something that if i drop it i'm like it's fine um and for some reason last year i bought gravity rush remastered oh, yeah. i don't know what happened there i may have been drunk i have no idea so 
I was like, I'll play this. And I was like, yep, this is like a Vita game, but like on a big screen. I'm on like mission eight of 21. Apparently it doesn't take long to burn through it. That is the most anime kind of game I was expecting every two seconds. It's like, I have to go save the world. <gasps> he thinks I'm cute. Oh my God, that yep. other girl's talking to him. I'm like, what's fucking happening? I can fucking move gravity. And my only attack is to fling my own self in gravity as a kick. Like you can't like just normal fight. You'd like, oh, I'm going to use gravity, throw my own body by the, at, at this enemy. And that's the move. And over and over. And I'm like, I don't know. I like it, I guess. I probably paid really cheap for it. Would not You're hoping you paid it. really cheap for it. I hope. No, I, I, yeah, that's true. I don't actually remember buying it, but I have looked. I think it's not expensive anyways. Um, yeah, so it's a game. I'm, I understand it, it's very Sony-like. I can see why people liked it back in the day. I'm sure on Vita this was blowing people's minds, or, unless it was PSP, but I think we it was We only had Vita. like four games on the Vita, so like the, it wasn't really hard to be in the top and five. And two of them were Little Big Planet games. Yeah, and the other two were Gravity Rush 1 and 2. Also, I looked in my library. I bought Gravity Rush 2. If anybody's wondering, I have... You're like, you know what? I don't even need to play the first one. I'm going to double down on this and get Look, the second one. I just assume you own everything because your backlog is just is infinite, so... I was going to say, I didn't want to... Like, I want to spend a side quest episode where we just go through, like, all the random shit that Chris has That's not a side here. quest, Kalen. That's an ongoing series. Maybe that's something that we just do, like... We'll do have a separate podcast one day that you won't be able to make because your time's limited, but it'll just be me and Chris. And we're just going to do like 10 minutes where we pick the five games off his backlog and just talk about them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, that would be fun because even I look and I go, I own that. I bought that in 2013. What the hell? Are so you we'll start with your you steam library. That'll, that'll give <laughs> us at least like nine to... months of content. Yeah. I've got the series that we need to do. I'm going to set up a set for thing. Chris, you need to give me access to all of your digital library. And what we're just going to do is I'm going to pick five random games and one of them will not be in that list. And you have to guess which <laughs> you don't own. <laughs> Dude, that's impossible for me. <laughs> hey, I'll give you my Switch library. That My backlog of my Switch. No, no, no. No, the game games. has to be fun. We can't, we can't make this easy for you. <laughs> yeah, I could name no. all six on my Switch. You didn't make, you didn't make <laughs> your backlog easy for yourself. Why do you think we're going to throw you an olive branch now? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna I'm gonna put one random and it's gonna be like four truths in a line. It's which one do you think you didn't buy? <laughs> oh yeah, I won't do well. That'll be fun though. I would play that. I mean, look, and, uh, you got a can... one in five chance every time. Surely you won't bat zero the entire time. No, imagine I do. You should at least get twenty percent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, if it's, yes, if it's oh. ten weeks and you haven't gotten one yet, then we're gonna be a little bit worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing Gravity Rush. I, I think the reason I bought it is because... Do you guys remember the Smash Brothers PlayStation game? What was that? PlayStation, PlayStation All-Stars? All -Stars. Yep. So I think Kat was on that, the main character of Gravity Rush. I feel like I she was she on that game. Because she was like... Yeah, I don't know if she was. I don't think she I, was. I feel like she was in something that was like a PlayStation like collab game where it was all the PlayStation characters together or some of them. Are you thinking Afterbot? No. <laughs> If she was in Astrobot, it'd be real weird. Uh, she was DLC. Uh, she was DLC. She, she so Chris bought the, the DLC, <laughs> and it was like, you know what? I like this character. I'm going to buy the other two games. Uh, no, I only bought it last year, and I haven't played PlayStation All-Star since my PS3, so I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it was just like, I probably just had it where I was like, I own like every Sony franchise there is, except this one. I can't just ignore one. It's not complete. I at least should own these and play them. Um, and that, I don't know. It's not like the worst game. It's not awful. And maybe the second game's better. It's just, it's very much a Vita game. And I, I'm, I'm very happy I can play it where it's like I play for an hour. I beat three missions out of 21 total. I've already looked how far I've got to go till this is over. I can play for an hour, finish three of them pretty good progress within a week the game would be done so i don't know we'll see if i can last if not i'll be like that was worth a shot and then i'll stop and i'll load up the second game i don't know <laughs> no probably not i don't know we'll see you yeah will. that's what i've been up to a bunch of nonsense to be honest speaking of nonsense adam 
Yeah. Yeah. Up. Speaking of nonsense, I got plenty of nonsense for you. So, <laughs> so let me tell you about what I've been doing in Yakuza Infinite Wealth. And I'm just going to switch over for the video feed just to tell people just what you're about to be in for now. <laughs> so if you're watching on YouTube and you have no idea what Yakuza does, well, you're about to find out. Uh, this is like the weirdest beach scene I've ever, like none of these people look like they've ever been to a beach. Don't worry kinda. about it. What is going on? <laughs> so let me explain to you what I've done in the last week. I have become a Pokemon trainer. I have also become a Pokemon snap artist where I'm taking pictures of delinquents that are basically walking around in wrestling gear and really weird friggin' masks. Uh, I am becoming really, really involved in Tinder, except all the matches that I keep getting just end up not being what they're... Well, I've been catfished at least seven different times. No, that sounds like accurate for Tinder. Yeah, yeah that's, that's real life. That's a Tinder uh, experience. I have <laughs> also probably, like, caught about 75 unique poke... Well, Sujimon, I gotta be technical here. And now I own a beach island where I'm trying to make a resort that's filled with basically trash and to what I only can describe as Sesame Street horror villains, as you can see on screen right now. What, what the fuck? And I what? fucking love what every second of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna How lie. How does this have anything to do with Yakuza? It doesn't. That's why it's great. So basically, in this game that is essentially supposed to be about you going to Hawaii to go and meet your long-lost mother has turned into a game where I am a Pokemon trainer, and I'm also playing Animal Crossing, Pokemon Snap, at least four different sports, and basically whatever else I can seem to kind of get myself into. Well, in the meantime, also, you know, walking around in a Fendoshi in the ocean trying to clean up all the garbage and selling it for CDs. And yes, none of those things are not true. Those are all things just, that are existing. I, I, feel like, I feel like Grand Theft Auto came out and was like, hey, we're going to do a, like a hardcore game, like gang life kind of video game. And then Saints Row was like, yeah, no, we're going to get crazy. And then Japan just like takes a drag of its smoke. It's like, you want fucking crazy? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, amateurs. <laughs> Man, I should comes be playing out of the this. shadow and be like, and this is the problem, you know, like, um, you know, Pokemon, the Pokemon company, like they let it slide with Pal World. And now it's just opened the floodgates and everyone's just ripping off Pokemon. But yeah, yep. I, I am. I'm 30 hours in. PlayStation says I'm 35% the way through. I know that's bullshit because uh, there I'm going to be spending so much time in the Animal Crossing game that they've set up that that's going to take a good portion of time because I think that's also how your money is going to get made in that game. So uh, I've got some work to do, and that's going to take some time. I, I was saying to Chris earlier, I'm like, man... I am pissed right now because I'm pretty sure there is no way I'm going to finish this game in time for Final Fantasy VII, so I'm going to be staring at Seven on my console going, I'm getting there. Just hold on. I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm also keeping I... Persona 3 Reload on the back burner because I'm like, you can wait. I've already played you once before. You are like two months down the road, hopefully. But also, the Suikoden successor is coming out in april you might not be getting played till the summer now sorry persona i love you but like you might just not make the cut at this point i want to play both of those and they're coming to game pass Ugh. stop it chris stop it <laughs> i have game pass i should use it i know i can finish <laughs> these in the year it's just a matter of when <laughs> i just would love to be in the boardroom when yakuza is like pitching their game and like hey we should make a pokemon game and like yeah I'm just no, going to no, tell you like, right now, it probably wasn't in a ballroom. It was probably at, at a at a bar. <laughs> we should make we should make a, 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 a like a harvest like a Animal Crossing. Yeah, we could do that. Wait, are we still doing Pokemon? Oh yeah, we're doing Pokemon and Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, <laughs> like in no, Japan. They, no, fuck it, we're going to Hawaii. <laughs> they literally, they are literally the mantra of "there's no such thing as a bad idea." <laughs> No bad ideas in the brainstorm. And the series is still going and doing very well. I so have no idea how. That was the secret the whole time. <laughs> um, oh. I've been quite boring compared to you guys. I am still making my way through Assassin's Creed. Um, I don't know why it's taking me this long. I always have the problems games. PlayStation says I'm 25 hours into Assassin's Creed, and I have no idea why. Um, I think I'm getting towards the end. I think I have like a couple more missions, but I've been doing like all the contract stuff and I'm just loving it because it it is probably one of the best. Like, and granted, I'm putting a caveat because there's a lot of room for it to turn left on like stupid and bananas avenues. So, um, with a caveat, this is one of the best Assassin's Creed games I think that they've made ever, if not at least in a very long time. Like, it is 
straight pure uncut Assassin's Creed. And knock on wood, there's not been any of like the alien history bullshit stuff that I hate. Like this is exactly what I want from Assassin's Creed game. So we'll see. Yeah, it's but. a good one. I agree. Definitely like it feels like Assassin's Creed 2, just like modernized. Like it yes. feels just the old Assassin's Creeds that we loved and needed when they first came out and just kept wanting more before Ubisoft was like, ah, we gotta nah, we Load gotta it. go here. Go here. Go yeah. here. Which is Do a real this. shame because I really wanted to get into it and it's just it wasn't clicking after like five or so hours, and I'm just like, man. Maybe I'm just not built for these anymore. Maybe this was like peak like twenties gaming for me. Mm-hmm. Right, if you're not into gone. it now, yeah. I was gonna say it's yeah, probably it's too focused. It does one thing. It doesn't have like pachinko machines. You're you're right. Costume. There there's not there's not the ability for me to go play Pokemon Snap with a guy who's wearing a a steak uh, swimsuit. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So a steak uh, swimsuit. I didn't misspeak too, either. <laughs> And that was way too specific for you to just make that up on your own. Yeah, that's true. Um, the other thing, too, I like about the game is I feel like it's it's not wasting my time. Like, there's not a huge amount of collectibles. There's not a huge amount. Of, like, it is the almost quintessential. Like, we've talked before about games being too long. Like, I feel like this is the perfect length of a game. Like, if I'm, let's say, a couple out, if I have a couple more missions to do before I clear it up, I think this is, like, the perfect game. Like, a perfect game length in terms of, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of getting over this. I'm kind of getting tired. Kind of like what you were talking about, Chris, where you get to the point where you're like, I'm done. I just need to get through the, I'm just going to mainline the story. I'm at that point And I feel like I'm almost there after having spent all the time doing the side quests. So like, bravo, Assassin's Creed. Like you've nailed the time. Yeah. That's, I, I actually felt kind of that way when I got to the end, it was, I got, I ended up getting the platinum, but it was cause I still felt like going back and doing the couple things just mm-hmm. to get it. Cause I still liked being in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, not like having to do specific things, just kind of being in it. Um, but it was the perfect length. It at mm-hmm. no point overstayed its welcome. As soon as you start to feel like, oh, I'm ready for the ending. Like you were there. It, it was great. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I could come back next week and be like, there's a whole second half, but I think we're, we're almost at the end. And, I think from there I'm going to switch over and start giving some love to the Xbox. And I think I'm I think the next one for me is going to be a cal- palette content. I'm going to play uh, Hi-Fi Rush. That's Ooh, that's a good, good one. That's yeah. a good pick. Yeah, yeah as well just as a I'm Saturday still, I'm still morning. Through, I'm still working my way through Mario and, and Zelda as well, but that's where I'm going to go next. Nice. Good picks. Good picks. Speaking of what's coming up next, uh, let's talk about what's coming up next for PlayStation. So uh, last week uh, we had a state of play. Uh, I thought we could kind of go through some of the games, saw, see what hit, what missed, and give our overall impressions of the state of play. You guys can also go off on Final Fantasy. I'll zone out for a bit because don't care at all. It's not going to sell me. So, yeah. Um, before we get into overall impressions, I thought we could kind of just jump through all we'll, this stuff, a couple games. We can talk about which ones we think stand out, which ones we think are neat, anything interesting there. Uh, so the show opened up. Excuse me. <laughs> so the show opened up with Helldivers 2. Uh, this coming out by the time you hear it tomorrow, uh, by the time you're listening, it'll come out tomorrow. Uh, they came with Helldivers 2. There was also Stellar Blade, which comes out April 26th, and Sonic and Shadow Generations Autumn 2024. Um, what, like, any thoughts on these ones? For me, I was really blown away by Helldivers. Like, I love the original Helldivers, and this one looks super cool. I'm really excited to try it out, really excited to play it, but I'm kind of... I, I let my PlayStation Plus expire and I now need to I'm debating do I buy it for a couple months to play this because just it looks so good. I'm yeah, so my issue with that it. right now is just like I need people to play it. There's no way I'm going to be playing that alone. So that's the immediate yeah. thing. And also it being just bogged in JRPGs right now. I'm like, OK, when am I going to play this? Because I, I keep looking at the date being like, well, I want to. There's no way I'm not going to. But when? And I don't yeah. know when the answer to that is. So. Just clear well, your backlog like me, man. You'll be. Fine. Yeah. No, you don't clear it. You just ignore it. Like I've I've got different sets of friends that I'm I'm paying attention to to see if they like they've been talking about maybe looking into it. So I might have people that I can start with. So I'm hoping that that ends up going, coming to fruition so I can at least get that in. Because same deal, I'm super pumped for that because it seems like the kind of game that you know it's the closest to a live service game that that I can see where I go. You know what? That might be like enough that I can keep up with that. It doesn't feel like a destiny now where if I literally spend less, if I take more than a month off, I'm going to be so far behind and I'm not gonna be able to catch up again. Well, I'm interested because the original, the original Helldivers, what they did that was really neat is that 
the game reset every I think it was like three months or something like that, or every six, two months. Like, like you did a thing where you were like going out expanding Earth's colony and stuff. And then after a certain time, it just reset, and you and your friends would have to go back and recolonize it. Yeah, because so they I said they was... said in the trailer during the state of play they were going to be actively like meshing or messing with the world as things go on to kind of like you know ch- either challenge us or if there's certain because I imagine it's going to be certain things of like oh we see that you guys are doing only this a lot okay well we're going to start messing with that thing so you guys don't co- keep going to that all the time because they're trying to like move us around in different spots rather than because you know what's going to happen is everybody's going to find like oh here's the ideal grind spot here's the easiest thing to do this and here's that and eventually they'll go okay well let's start putting a couple of wrenches in that and start moving you guys over to some other activities and keep this you know as fresh as we can yeah which i hope that works out i mean some a lot of companies have tried to do that they can only last for so long because again putting people constantly into paying attention to that eventually costs a lot of money depending on how much you're uh you're either profiting or not, so. Yeah. I thought it was interesting, though, that Helldivers 2 was not listed as, like, a PlayStation Plus exclusive kind of freebie. And instead, they're giving us Foam Stars, which is basically just PlayStation's ripoff of... Um, Splatoon. What the hell is that game? Splatoon, thank which, you. Which I have yeah. downloaded. I do intend to try at some point, because I'm just curious, because I want to... I, I have... I like Splatoon the little bit that I played of it when I was playing it at, like, a friend's place, so I'm curious to see what mm-hmm. their version of that looks like, because, I mean... It's competitive multiplayer, but also not in the sense of like what Call of Duty is, where it's very, it's very much meant to be like super frat boy, like yell at your opponent sort of stuff. Whereas this seems a little more like cute and fun and something like that. So I, I'm oh. at least going to give it a shot to see, you know, if, if it's at least like tenable, if it still ends up being to the point that I'm like, eh, this is too competitive for my liking because me and competitive multiplayer have not gotten along in the last couple of years. But either way, we'll no. see. You're you're kidding yourself, Chris if, or uh, Adam, if you think that there's not going to be uh, misogyny and racial slurs dropped in this chat. Well, yeah, but it's not going to be as <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Chris, what about you? What kind of stood out? Uh, like, uh, you must have been super excited for the Sonic and Shadow generations. I was, but I'm not going to lie. Like, not as excited as I thought. It's because okay. when I saw the rumors and everything, like, oh, new Sonic generations, like Sonic Generations Two. Apparently, this is just a remaster of Sonic Generations, but they added a bunch of Shadow levels to it. So Shadow's thing is all new, but all the other levels with Sonic are just the levels from the 2011, I think, game. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and the thing is, is like I have Sonic Generations on my Xbox. It's one of the two games i think that i bought on there and it's just because the developers didn't update the game to like 60 fps and all of that but xbox has this thing where it doubled the frame rate of all these like 30 fps games because they were like 4k 30 and they did some magic behind the scenes where you load up a bunch of these games and it automatically ups it to 60 fps something to do behind the scenes the developer didn't have to do anything they just had to like not say no when xbox did it and like it looks and plays amazing because it's 4K 60 on the TV, and like I already have it. So the remaster, adding the shadow levels, like Shadow, I get he's like a cool character and stuff, but for me, like I would have wanted more Sonic levels. I would have wanted like a Sonic Generations two. So I think I got my own like hopes up before that announcement. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'll look at it. Maybe I'll grab it for the Steam Deck or something if it runs really well. Actually, I know I have Sonic Generations on PC as well, so technically I can probably play it on there already. I don't know. I may not actually end up getting it. I may not be very excited. Um, To be honest, I was much more excited about the other two games, about uh, Stellar Blade and... That's what we're talking about. Stellar Blade and Helldivers, right? It was Stellar Blade? I mean, I'm I'm just hearing Faker talk over there, Mr. Sonic guy. Yeah. Faker talk. I love Sonic, don't get me wrong, but it's just a remaster of the game that I don't think really needs much remastering it's like adding shadow levels if he has a fucking gun like i don't want them i want to run as sonic make me run add tails make make a tails generations i don't know do something like that that would be cool um but yeah just like re-releasing the game and being like hey it's in 4k 60 now like yeah no shit the older one was too um i don't know it just is it's just not my uh my cup of tea i guess or it might be great and i'm wrong and if i am then i'll grab it i'll add it to the backlog um but yeah no like stellar blade to me looks i'm not usually into that type of game and for some reason this one i don't know if it's the 
settings. I don't know if it like the setting. I don't know if it's just the vibe. I have no idea what it is, but for some reason watching this, I was like, maybe it's time I play one of these games. Cause like, I've never played near. I've yeah, never it's got played any of these. vibes. Yeah. I was going to say, this looks so much like near, like, Oh yeah, it definitely does. And I just, I've never played any of these games and I'm like, maybe I should just like grab one and play it, you know, maybe wait for a sale, something like that, but Throw like, it on the definitely backlog, give it a go. 12 years later. Yeah, 12 years later, like, oh my God, guys, did you know that I bought Stellar Blade 1, 2, and 3? I didn't worry, I'm pretty sure it was on sale. <laughs> I mean, sure I mean, straight up, like, from everything they've shown about this game, and I and I probably have said this beforehand, but, like, this is one of the most gorgeous games that the system has advertising for right now. Like, the art style is so unique, and it's, it's in a way, like, it's, it's Death Stranding, but it doesn't look nearly as confusing, and I know that's saying a lot, given that Stellar Blade is still looking oh, very confusing. We'll get there. But yeah, we'll get, <laughs> oh, yeah. we'll get to Death Stranding, but, like, man, like... Oh. This game is really trying hard to be like, hey, we're really pushing, you know, without being complete, like, cartoonish anime. Like, they're going like, hey, this is as good as 3D anime is going to get for a while. So, like, look forward to that. And, I mean, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's Team Ninja that does this, so. I think so? I'm yeah. pretty sure. I think but so. Like, Let me double check. You keep going. It's, it's still definitely, like, the game style. I didn't like Nier Automata that much, but I think that's mostly because, like, the concept of it was just too confusing and too weird for even my taste whereas like the gameplay was fine but it wasn't something that wasn't sticking so it's being developed by shift blade uh yeah shift blade okay oh, it's shift blade okay shift up shift up shift up oh shift up okay okay but yeah like, again yeah. like what's what sold me and i'm sure chris you've probably been in a similar boat is that like just the actual like atmosphere and the art style that they've done with it is just it's so visually appealing that like like as long as it has like functional and like decent gameplay like it seems like just the world itself is what's kind of selling this game right now because for most people like i don't think they're playing they're seeing this gameplay trailer and going like oh a third person combat game oh yeah that's that's really sell me i think they're all looking at this being like dude how what how fucking crazy does this look right now yeah that's definitely where my vibe was it's kind of like how i've been craving like blockbuster movies that are like a unique brand new ip kind of idea and watching this game kind of gave that to me it was like this is like a brand new ip it seems to be like a very interesting story and setting and cool vibe and everything and it's different from what i normally gravitate towards so like maybe it's try time i try something new and just kind of go in and give this game a go so i've added it to my wish list it's one of the ones from the state of play that i did do that um, but yeah, this one and Hell Divers 2, like you guys were saying, very, very excited for that. All I but know I is I really agree. want that red and black checkered coat. Like, I actually want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely should. The premise of this game really intrigues me. Like, it looks cool. Um, but I, one, I don't like the, the monster characters. I find it kind of like uninspiring. And then mm. it has very much like JRPG tropes in it. And that just kind of red flags go off in my head so i'm like i'm gonna pass on this one maybe one day if it gets like amazing reviews but like cool concept but it's not it's not necessary for me yeah yeah speaking of like anime games uh next year we had uh, that came up were zenless zone zero which is like an anime co-op hero shooter um which is developed foam stars which we talked about a little bit and then dave the diver uh coming in april 2024 with godzilla I, i'll Any be the first to I'll say right now, I've already had Dave the Diver on my, like, radar on Steam because it's doing very well there. And, like, whenever you see, like, most plays Steam Deck games, Dave the Diver is already always on that list. Like, it's such a cool concept of, you know, diving during the day, fighting off fish and stuff, and then selling them in your sushi restaurant at night as, like, a restaurant simulator. Like, I just kind of, that seems like a very cool game to kind of play and pick up. I was extremely shocked by the Godzilla crossover. <laughs> I was not expecting that, but I was like, this is so good. Like he's diving and who's going to be in the ocean fucking Godzilla? Hell yeah. Like, <laughs> why that, not? I don't, why not? Like 
it just kind of seemed to fit, right? Like it's this crazy concept of a game already with just some normal looking dude named Dave. And all of a sudden, this is the kind of shit he's going to be dealing with. It just Classic got Dave. me more excited. I don't think I'd pick this up on PlayStation still. I think for me, this would be a PC game just because then I could play like on the TV on my PC or probably on the Steam Deck. Or if I go on PlayStation, I'll be like limited only to the TV. But I'm very mm, happy. Not anymore. Not with the portal. Well, the portal. That's true. That's true. Also, you um, have like a Steam Deck. You can play remote on your. I Steam could do Deck the too. remote. I know. I know. I Stop know. making problems for you. Stop putting barriers up for yourself. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, like I am very happy that this game is getting that recognition and kind of ending up everywhere because uh, it is like it's an indie game and it's an indie game getting a crossover with Godzilla. That's an IP that's not probably easy to get, right? So uh, that one is definitely the one that spoke to me the most out of that list uh besides also foam stars but that's just because it's coming to ps plus and like adam i just kind of want to check that out it seems like a competitive game but it's not going to be like stressfully competitive and taken too seriously which is what i need in a competitive game um because at the very I, least too it's yeah. it's free so like if it ends yeah. up not being your thing well it didn't cost you anything more than your time so yeah, yeah. also shout out to playstation for doing this constantly with these like online competitive games right like I, yeah, I hope like it does Rock better League? than Destruction All Stars. And that was an idea that I, oh, yeah. I was like so happy. I thought it was such a cool idea, but it just in practice didn't go very well. So I hope Foam Stars has a better yeah. outcome. I think they also did that with Knockout City, right? The dodgeball game. I don't yeah, believe they... did they with that because I think that was an EA game, right? That's not necessarily it was EA, but I think it came. I know it came out at one point to PlayStation Plus because I played Definitely it. Did. And I would not. Yeah, I can't remember if it was that. launch or not, but I do remember that it was like free on a lot of places. I know they did like a good run early on like, everywhere that they were trying to get it free to get people in the door. Yeah, that is true. But I mean, PlayStation had Fall Guys as like yep. a PlayStation Rocket Plus League. launch. Rocket League. Rocket League. And these aren't Hell like the PlayStation was. Plus, like, you know, the monthly, uh, like the, the catalog, like the actual games catalog. They're like little Game Pass. This was the like, you get to keep it for forever as long as you still have your PlayStation Plus account going. But it's actually like just in that monthly games, like which hmm. was back then very affordable and cheap to do that right before they raise the prices so it's crazy that they keep getting these deals on these non-playstation ex uh, like sony first party games uh and throwing them in there right because now yeah, I, mean, stars I mean the trade-off is like that you get a lot of customers in the door at launch you hopefully click with somebody and then you get enough people to stick around that they're going to buy your your microtransactions for all the skins and whatever else they got going on there and it keeps because i mean obviously for rocket league and fall guys it worked really really well oh yeah so, you know, Very well. there's going to be somewhere works. I don't know if Foam Stars will be the one that does well. I mean, we'll see in the next month or so. It's not. But my vibes no, are probably so. not, but. I think it'll do okay and it'll be around, but I don't think it will. Yeah. I don't think it'll be as much maybe of a dive as uh, the Destruction All-Stars or whatever that was. That was one that was like I installed and never even opened in the end. Like I, I never I even played, played it. it. I honestly really like the game, but no one was playing it almost right off the bat so it was just it was just a real shame like that was the kind of game that's like man if that was like a steam game for cheap for free like that would have been amazing to play with friends like that is a great oh, yeah. game to play with a bunch of people but like just on your own online eh. here's the problem that i see with foam stars and this is the problem with playstation's strategy in general of doing live service games foam stars comes out february 6th hell divers comes out february 8th so literally in two days two playstation online service games are going to be coming out and no offense of the two i think hell divers is the one that people are excited well for. the trade-off is oh, that yeah. you've got one that's competitive whereas one is co-op so there's kind of like a balance too of like for your destiny folk there's something for that crew to go to and then for your competitive guys that are waiting for the next call of duty or whatever else there's something else for them yeah. call of duty guys are not looking to scratch that itch with foam stars <laughs> Well, Fortnite players are. I'm trying to throw a bone both. for them because I don't think anybody's scratching the itch for Foam Stars, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, moving yeah. along, we had... Oh, just just uh, before that, I just want to quickly oh, sorry, say, please, like, yeah, with Zenless, um, I obviously, that one's probably going to do really, really well just on the basis that it's made by the same developers as Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. I, I've, I looked at it like, it's my visual style, but again, like, free-to-play you know, roguelite elements, like it's hitting all the buzzwords, but the free to play immediately makes me go, okay, but what's the catch? So, yeah. and I mean, with their games so far, like I've tried both Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. They don't click with me. I have a feeling that it's probably going to be this because I'll try Zenless if I get, if I ever get a chance to get around to it. 
Because, I mean, I'm always looking for, for something fun to just kind of pop in for an hour or two. But I have a feeling that, like, this is going to be another game that it's going to have its its niche. It's going to have its crew that's just going to be diehards for it. There's going to be a shit ton of art done about it, like every Miiverse has been doing so far. Uh, but it's, it's just going to be one of those things that, like, if you're already interested in these types of games, you were happy about this. And if you don't, if you're Kalen, for example, you were like, I don't give a fuck about this. Get out of my head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. None of these really move the needle for me at this point in the show. Is whatever. Um, then we got started getting a little bit interesting. We had V Rising, which is kind of like a Hades meets like a, a Bram Stoker kind of universe. I was a little bit concerned with that trailer at first because I'm like, they were just showing like you just hitting rocks and like building stuff. I'm like, guys, like this isn't a good way to start off a trailer. And then the second half played, and I went, okay, I'm still not quite in on this. But anybody who's been playing Hades or games like that that love that, now all of a sudden they're paying attention. Yeah, it looks cool. Um, not sure it's necessarily for me. This might be one that eventually I get to if it gets, if it has that Hades vibe where people are like, oh man, you got to play this. Like maybe, but this one didn't do it for me. There's also the Silent Hill and Silent Hill 2 remake. Um, like, so yeah, did, like, are you any of you guys like Silent Hill fans? <laughs> no. no. No, I don't enjoy my nightmares. I, I, I don't like them. <laughs> I, I will say that I was not impressed by the Silent Hill 2 remake mm -hmm. graphics. I feel like when I was looking at it, it felt not... Maybe it was just because it played after the new uh, Silent Hill game, the one that was, like, Which released not yeah, right away. great reviews. Oh, no? Uh, no. No. No, what's it? What, what, what are you hearing in terms of Fives reviews? Fives and sixes, minutes? mostly. Ooh. Oh, interesting. I have friends that are all, I, one of my friends is super into Silent Hill and played it and went, it's okay. And there, oh. there were some dots in there. I'm like, mm, yeah, that's not a good sign. Isn't I mean, it it's free? Konami. So, you know, <laughs> we're still on the fence with figuring out if Konami even actually enjoys making video games anymore. So that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I thought, oh, go, ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I thought that the, the free one or whatever it is that I don't know what it was called. Silent Hill. The terrifying. Oh, the short message, yes. So, so Silent Hill Terrifying. I um, I thought that it looked really nice. Like, I loved the visual style. And at first I thought this was a remake of Silent Hill 2. And I was like, oh, okay, they've, like, really redone it. But then it turned out this was its own thing. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, it's a free game releasing today yeah, or something. Cool I don't... dropped it for free. Yeah, and, and dropped immediately. It was just like, here you go. Here's, here's the game. Um, but then when Silent Hill 2 played, I was like, this looks like somebody's just running the old game in like a really impressive emulator to me. I don't know why I saw that. It's probably not as bad as I as I'm fine like I'm thinking about it, but I did feel like the graphics if it was a remake, it didn't look like a remake. And I don't know if it's actually just a remaster. If it is, and it's just like, yeah, we took the original, you know, code and we've just kind of upped the textures. I could see that. But if it's supposed to be a remake of Silent Hill 2, I didn't see the remake in it. Like the new Dead Space, I look at that. And I'm like, wow, that is so visually impressive. Whereas Silent Hill 2, I saw that, that trailer. And I was like, this doesn't graphically look that impressive to me. At least this free one looked impressive to me, especially for a free game. I was like, yeah, that seems about the budget you'd put into for a free game. That's kind of cool. So yeah, I don't I mean, know. That's what I thought. I'm, I imagine for those that are big fans of the series, they probably don't really care. They're just happy to finally have something again, which, you know, you would assume would lead to a full on new game, but also at the same time, based on how the short message is done, that's up in the air. So, I mean, we'll see, but I mean, we're, we're both, uh, we're both not horror people. I actually tried resident evil two recently, finally. And after about an hour and change, I went, Nope, Nope. Oh, see, I I'm good. got through that. I got through that one. I'm proud of myself. I did play Dead one. Space then. Yeah, I, I, I never finished Dead Space either, so I know how that's going to go. So, no. <laughs> I'm talking more to Chris. I, it's on Game Pass, so I, I can just go ahead and play it. Uh oh. No, I think we just lost Kalen. We'll, we'll figure that out as we go. These well, three was Judas. Oh, I oh. was watching. Oh, he's back. Kalen, he's alive. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Um, yeah, for me, I was going to say, I don't know if I got cut off or not, but the one that stood up for me of the three was Judas. Um, that was oh, yeah, the next list. So that would be surprise. what the uh, VR games then too? Judas, Metro nope, Awakening nope, VR, and just, Legendary just, Tales? Nope, V Rising, Silent Hill, and Judas. I put Silent Hill in Oh, you, you just. Oh, okay. right, right, right. Yeah. 
So Judas for me was really cool. Like very much a Bioshock feel. And no, yes. like, I feel like Bioshock's been so far removed that I'm for another one. And so I kind of liked it. Like the dystopian kind of nothing is as it seems. I mean, it makes sense because it's Ghost Story Games, which is Ken, Ken Levine, Levine Studio. Yeah. So Bioshock vibes are not surprising. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to do that, but like not get sued. Perfect. That's the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then we yeah, watched exactly. the trailer and went that's bioshock <laughs> that is bioshock yeah so bioshock but i love yeah. it. It, it that one i am excited for the only thing it's missing that is throwing bees surprise. at people oh well it's just a trailer there's still more in it sorry yeah. you're gonna yeah. you're gonna throw bees. locusts at people it's different no, you throw wasps 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 <laughs> yellow jackets yeah exactly yellow jackets uh then we moved on to the vr um section so we had metro awakening vr legendary tales vr uh, and Dragon's Dogma 2, which is not a VR game. But, like, I want to start off with that question. Like, was this enough of a showing for PlayStation VR? I feel like VR has been very quiet lately. And was this enough to kind of bring life back into the system? Is this enough for them to support it? Or or do you think that this is just kind of the dying whims of a abandoned system? I, I, th- I think we're at that point that it's, like, Horizon didn't do very well. And I think at this point, like, you're you're going to try stuff, but, like, as we've said many times on the show, like it's still a very small niche market that's just not going to click with most people. So really, like you're, it's in the same way that you know how when we used to have these big like E3 section, like there'd be five minutes of indie games and that was it, and it was just to appease that market. That's what this VR section is. Is it's literally just hey for like the two hundred of you that are paying attention to this section, here's what you can do for the next for the next couple of months. And they're like, cool, I'll see you guys there. And for the rest of us, we're like, and there's our bathroom break. See you in a minute. Like <laughs> yeah. Metro is, it's a great game to be putting in VR. I think that's, that's got great vibes for it. The other game, I thought that's a cool, like Dungeons and Dragons VR game, essentially if you play with friends, but like visually don't look that great. But again, it's VR. You have to kind of just accept that still. So that didn't really do much for me. So, so I mean, it's it's VR. Like none of us can really afford that unless we feel like you know taking a grand out of our out of our account and throwing it at, at a system that we're probably not going to use very often. So didn't really do anything to yeah. change to to turn the needle there. But I also realized that I'm already priced out of that market to begin with. So there's not really much they they could give me a list of ten things I want to play and I'd still go. I still don't have a thousand dollars. I'm sorry. <laughs> are those are those ten things eight hundred dollars in discounts? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like kind of the same way. I feel like if they wanted to really focus on VR, the best thing they could do is have their own like VR state of play and like mm. advertise it as such so that people who aren't into VR don't have to really watch. They, like, I mean, we still would, but like, you know, it's not for you. There's nothing to complain about or feel if there's enough or not. And then they just have like 15 VR games or 10 VR games in their own state of play. I think that's what Sony would need to do or should do. But I don't think they have enough games to really do that. I feel like there's just not enough demand, not enough anything for it. So I I, I do agree with you, Caitlin, that I think it's kind of the... Well, I guess I would be agreeing with Adam, because, Caitlin, you didn't yeah. officially say that. But, yeah, like, I feel like, yeah, it's kind of the, like, hey, it's still alive. You know, we're not ignoring it it's, fully. It's more like the basis of that the technology is showing, like, how they can make pretty effective tracking and stuff for a little bit cheaper than what most PC headsets do. So it's more like it's nice that it exists in the world. So it hopefully gives like a blueprint for other companies to go make a headset that's available for everything. And they can also kind of take the price down a little bit more. So I think it's more like advancing the tech more than it is like giving like these amazing gaming experiences. I think it's in the same way of like how motion control for a while we thought was going to just progress into being something. And then it died off. I think VR is one that's going to stick just because we're always looking for like, we're all hoping that one day the holodeck is a real thing. So you know, it's it's the thing that, like, it's eventually going to get to a point where I think it's a much more acceptable experience, but I think we're still, like, a ways away from that. So we're, we're more seeing the baby steps, and we're at that point right now that we look at these trailers and go, it's not ready for me yet. I'm not I'm not ready to go to go deep into this still. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm torn in both ways, because, like, I feel like this is the most impressive viewings I've seen of VR gaming for PSVR since it's been announced mm. right like that legendary tales looks like it could be a full-out video game in and of itself and if you can go around and basically play skyrim in vr and like build swords and fight things and stab them and 
that looks awesome. Is that just how the trailer makes it look, or if that's how it is, that's a different question. True. But it looks really cool, and like Metro Awakening VR is just so cool. Like I, I love the Metro series. Like I read, I read Metro Twenty Thirty Three. Uh, I've played all the games like it's a cool environment and to have that in VR is really neat. Um, but I like I just like to have this like drip feed of just even if they're great games, if you're only having two games a year, like, I don't know. And once again, Legendary Tales coming out February 8th. Like, what are you doing, PlayStation? You're shooting your shot all at once. Like <laughs> that was the entirety of State of Play where I'm like, guys, I don't have this much time in three months. Give me something yeah. in May, please. Yeah. So I like I thought it was a good it was a good showing of what it can do, but I still don't think that there's enough of a library and it's not supported enough to justify cuz like you have to drop 5, 6, 700 dollars for a VR system. And then you still have to buy the game and I imagine these are going to be full priced 60, 70, 80 dollar like games that like I don't know if they're worth it yet, right? Yeah, if I had you know, all the a, disposable weird... income in the world, you bet your sweet ass I'd be trying some of these things. But I don't have that much disposable income, so I'm out. <laughs> well, I yeah. think the problem is, is that, like, it's too... Ex- like, one of the problems with VR is that... And I imagine... I'm not a developer by any trust. I haven't talked to anybody about this. But I imagine that it's a lot of work to build a VR game that you can't make it at that 30 to $40 price point experience, which I feel VR games need to be. Like, the the quality and the, and the quantity of those games demand, like, a $30, $40 price as, like, hey, this is a cool experience... But the work to make them doesn't relate to what the value is of the cost. That makes sense. Yeah, like a lot, yeah. a lot of this just feels like it's more like, again, like it's it's trying to progress the tech. And it's also a lot of passion projects. Just people just really like working with this stuff, I imagine. Because like, let's be honest, I can't imagine that many that many developers are making these VR games and thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to we're going to sell millions of copies of this. Like they're they're mostly sitting there being like, we really, really love this tech. We want to make something cool with it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very, be. it's a very small, like, I think there's a trade-off that it's a very small scene that if you, like, there's not as much, like, you've got some elbow room in terms of... Oh, yeah, of if, if, if you make, like, music. one of the better games on the system, you're like, you're going to sell so many copies because you're going to be the one that everybody goes to. Exactly. Um, And then the last one that kind of jumped out of the three for me, like, one of the surprises that I'm going to kind of see how it turns out is Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, I've never played the first Dragon's Dogma, but this one looks kind of cool. Yeah, I was surprised. Adam, you and I were chatting in the Discord chat uh, while watching it. And was it this one? We were yeah, like, we thought oh, it was it's Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter for a minute. <laughs> like, oh, wow, look I at this too. Monster Hunter. They like totally, it's like, oh, that actually kind of makes sense. I, I've yeah, read a it, lot because uh, that community is really passionate. In, and I've seen a lot of people that, and I never got a chance to play the first one either. But I saw a lot of people who were talking about their experiences with the first one. And, and a common thread that I saw was a lot of people saying, that they had no like idea what they were doing when they started playing this game. And as soon as they hit a, a certain corner, all of a sudden they went, holy shit, this game's amazing. Like it's one of those things that like, as soon as it clicks, it fucking clicks. And it, and it makes me kind of curious that, you know, if it ever, like I have no time to get around to that anytime soon, but if it's ever, you know, on discount and I have like a free chance to, you know, if I got a couple of weeks where there's, I'm waiting for something to come out, I absolutely want to try this game because I've heard so many good things about the first one from their community and other people outside. And it's just the kind of thing where it's like, Capcom has been doing so well that I feel like I owe it to just try something that I normally wouldn't on their side because they've done so well with everything so far. Yeah, like I have strong feelings that even if it's not my type of game, it will be really well done just because of Capcom's current track record for sure well for me like i just feel like i want to play a high fantasy kind of game with some role play aspects to it and this just kind of seems to be scratching itch like we don't see like these kind of simple basic like and i'm saying this all in good ways like open world fantasy game and that this seems awesome to me so well i mean i mean you need something else to do when you when you can only play Baldur's gate like once every blue moon with with uh, your wife right so yeah yeah, you've noticed that I haven't been talking about that much. <laughs> no, <lately. laughs> of course, of course, I paid attention to that. <laughs> so that one comes out March twenty second. Once again, flooding the market right now. Um, and I mean, I guess it's a good problem out. to have that there's just so many games, but at the same time, I was like, oh my god, I want to finish all the. I want to play all of you. I still have twenty twenty three to get through. I still have twenty thirteen to get through. That's <laughs> your own fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's a self inflicted wound, there, Chris. <laughs> 
Um, and then we'll just kind of wrap it up with the last ones. I'm going to kind of put it all into one category. So this, I feel like for the most part, and there's one that stands out uh, as, a, as an oddball that like kind of was the big part of this. So we had Rise of the Ronin, uh, a deep play there, Death Stranding 2, and Hideo Kojima coming up and being Hideo Kojima. But the one that stood out to me as like the weird outlier and like what was a remaster for 20 for Until Dawn? Yes. Who's asking for a remake of Until Dawn? Or I'm remaster? sure somebody was, but mm, no. it wasn't that many people. Might have been like two or three people that might have been saying, hey, it'd be cool. I just like, I don't know, like Until Dawn was cool. It was like a good game at the time, but it's not one that it, like of all the games that Sony has, like I'm not clamoring for an, a remaster of Until Dawn. Like, I mean, to be fair, it's the one good one that that studio has made because every every one they've done since then has not been very well received. So you know what? <laughs> if they want to go back to the glory days a little bit, I guess I don't blame them. But I mean, like, it's not like it doesn't look like it, I, it didn't even look great when it first came out. But like, I don't know. I just I feel weird. It feels weird. The games that Sony's been deciding to remaster. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a weird it's, choice. Like, we don't have an Infamous. Like, Infamous hasn't yeah. gotten a remaster. Like, Infamous is locked in on the PlayStation 3. Yeah. Right? Look, we just assume if Resistance is just not coming back. Killzone might just be, or you know, Resistance, vanished. Killzone. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. of, all this, of all the series, you're remaking one from the PlayStation 4 that I've never heard a strong fan base. Like, I'm not saying this is a bad game. I Like, I will give it credit. It's a good game. But it does not have a rapid fan base that's like, where the hell's the next Until Dawn? You're right, Kaylin. You know what we need? We need one more Last of Us remake. I mean, <laughs> it's been it's been almost like a couple months since we've had one, so. Right? <laughs> it's been a year since we've had a remake of Last of Us 1. We've really... Yeah, they, yeah, they were clearly, that. clearly, like, it, everything's advanced so much now. We can get another one in. Exactly. It's been too long. There's been upgrades. Uh, like, I just, it's just a weird choice. And it's weird because it's on the PS4, and the PlayStation 5 is backwards compatible with the PS4, so theoretically you could just go buy Until Dawn and play it on your PS5. I think it's part yeah. of, I think it's part of the PlayStation collection. It is. I think so, yeah. So like where's the mark like anyone who's wanted to play this game has played it. It's not like no one's holding out for a remaster to play it. Yeah, no, it's Yeah. It's a weird right. one. I didn't get it. I was like, cool, I guess. I don't care though. <laughs> I thought they were it, they were announcing a sequel to that game or something like that, and I was like, See, that oh, would have been cool. a big deal. Well, and yeah, even then, it would have been like, eh. But that's also because, again, like everything they've released since Until Dawn is not really done very well. So, well, this is, so this isn't this isn't done by the original studio that made it. So what? what no, I but that's what I mean. Is like, if it was like a sequel, then I would have gone okay. But still, like you guys don't seem to make good games ever since Until Dawn. So mm, I don't mm-hmm. think anybody really cares now, but. So from what I understand, this is being made by Ballistic Moon, who is the team from the form, like they're a team that left the original company. Like, I want to say it's not Blue Point who made Until Dawn. Who made Until Dawn? No, I I can't think of the name right now. I have no idea, to be honest. I never played those games, so I I have no idea. Supermassive Games. Oh, okay. So from what Uh. I understand, it's Supermassive Games made Until Dawn. They were supposed to make another game for PlayStation. That was gonna be the like the Man of Medan series or whatever, and they're like, "Hey, we're going multi-platform." And PlayStation was pissed about that, and I guess this new studio and Sony didn't lose much with that though. Is Ballistic Moon, who is made up of former Supermassive developers, so it's them coming back and remake remastering their own game. But it's like, why? That why are the resources going to this? Right? Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it didn't seem like it made a lot of sense, but I mean. It might have made more sense than the entire Death Stranding 2 trailer, which, even though it made we no sense, I couldn't Kojima. stop watching. We need to talk about Hideo Kojima. That man has lost his goddamn mind. Like, I have no idea what's going on anymore. At I, I, I demand yeah. at this point, I will never play this game, but I demand someone get an anime studio like Trigger, who did Cyberpunk Edge Runners on the phone, and be like, we need a, a Death Stranding anime now. Because I do not care about this game, but goddamn, will I watch complete nonsense for for twelve episodes? I am fucking down. Just watch the cutscenes, and I, it'll be twelve hours. No, nope, no, nope, it's not the same. 
It's not the same. I just it, couldn't get over the girl's glove mask. What are they? Are those robotics? Yeah. Are the, is like, that no uh, idea? Apparently, they're moving. They're moving. That was the and thing that freaked me out. Box. Like, what the hell is that? There's a guy that's fighting with like a guitar, and and, he, and the music is what actually is the attack. And I'm like, I love all of this. I do not care about the game at all, though. Still no idea. I have never watched on. a trailer in my life where I have been so enthusiastically paying attention to something and still going, but I'm not playing this. And like the weird thing is the marionette is in stop motion. Why is he in stop motion? Yeah, it's, like, like, it's like when you play Spider-Man, but you have the Spider-Verse uh, animation going. Yeah. Yeah, how how it, come he lives in 16 FPS? How did he pull that off? Kojima <laughs> yeah. just goes, why not? It makes no That's his consistent sense. answer. Why not? Yeah, I I feel like Kojima needs to be working on a on, on a Yakuza game. Like I feel like that's what makes sense. Oh, see if this no, no, was a Yakuza no, 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 game, no, 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 I almost no. Yakuza get still it. does make sense. <laughs> I know that you guys don't think it does. It does actually make sense. I don't need Kojima to completely like actually go full nonsense with it. <laughs> I don't know. Like I never played the first Death Stranding. It doesn't appeal to me, and this just seems like more of it. And I like how they're like. Hey, here's all your guns. Wink, wink. Because a huge. Type I of genuinely glass tried. I tried so hard, and I and I was like, I don't get it. What? What? Why is this interesting to people? Like, it's confusing already. And then the gameplay is like, what am I doing? I feel like Kojima yeah. is just like the art house kid that makes weird movies and then invites you over to his house to watch him, and you're like. I said yes, I'll watch it. Now I'm here, and I want to go home. Look, but we need one of them. A... Somebody's got to be that role. Yeah, <laughs> I just I don't yeah, know. I still have no idea what the first one is about or this one. But don't and any time I would have almost figured it out, I'm just even more lost. But don't like, worry, it'll, it, it'll all be fine when he makes totally not Metal Gear, and it'll be totally sensical. Everything will make sense, like Metal Gear always has. Oh, I just like. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it's a weird thing where he makes no goddamn sense and no one it's like an emperor without clothes kind of situation and no one wants to be the first one to be like what the fuck is this like everyone's just like oh it's so brave it's so artistic it's so like in like smart and you got to think about it and no one's the, could be the first one to be like this doesn't make a goddamn sense at all oh they all know they're just like meh I'll still play it <laughs> Kojima's gonna Kojima <laughs> it's just gonna Kojima. They'll either play it or they'll wait a month until uh, you know at least like a hundred different YouTube channels have these like three hour videos on how to make sense of all of it. Yeah, um, and then we can talk. Yeah, like you said, he kind of hinted, nudge, nudge that he is making definitely not a Metal Gear Solid game, plastic sprocket or whatever, <laughs> steel call. I don't know. Yeah. And it was kind of like it was very much hinted that will also be like a movie or TV tie-in or something too that's just like it seems <laughs> yeah that'll be all, all like on youtube hire... yeah we actually had to hire a hollywood studio we're just filming it it's easier he <laughs> <Hideo Kojima laughs> just wants to be a movie producer like he just wants to be a movie director but his parents forced him into video games and he's like no it's not what i want to do i just want to make movies he's like you'll make video games he's like fine and he just resented it and for his whole life just like makes the video games as an excuse to have cutscenes. yeah i think so uh, and then, like, what I think personally was the biggest one of the show was the Rise of the Ronin uh, deep dive. Did you guys, what did you guys think of this? Are you guys big fans? Are you guys looking forward to this? I mean, I'm still going to say it's the same thing that I said um, the last time that we were seeing trailers of it. The initial trailer, I was super hyped. And now what I've seen since, it makes me go, yeah, I'm curious, but I'm I'm still unsure just because of the nature of what the game is. Like, it could, like, because Ghost of Tsushima was good for a little while, and then I burnt out on it. Rise of the Ronin still give me a similar vibe, but I think at least with the the gameplay in this one, I think there's a better chance of it sticking a little bit longer, but I'm not convinced like that it's going to suddenly change my mind on like or if 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 an open world game or anything of that aspect, but I think it's something that I'm like when I can, I will play it again much like everything else. I'll get around to it, I don't know, some point in the fall at this juncture, but Chris, what about you? What did you think of Rise of the Ronin? I, I'm interested. I'm very interested in Rise of the Ronin. It, uh, it, I did get like obviously very Ghost of Tsushima, slight Assassin's Creed, I guess vibes, but with a grappling hook. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, I loved Ghost of Tsushima. I, I never got bored of that one. For some reason, it just clicked with me, probably because of the Assassin's Creediness of it. It was like a better Assassin's Creed than Assassin's Creed at the time, because <laughs> um, I played it very stealthy. Um, 
So it kind of gave that kind of vibes, and I really like the setting and stuff like that. So I, I'm definitely very interested, but I will check out reviews and stuff first. I'll, I want to see what, what is obviously going on behind the scenes. Like, we're just seeing trailers, and I want to see, like, people actually playing it. Like, is it fun? You know, is it just a Ghost of Tsushima again, but better or worse? Like, I, I want to see what other people have to say first. Yeah, I'm... This is very much on my radar, and depending on how the reviews go, like you said, it seems to hit that Assassin's Creed and the Ghost of Tsushima kind of look. I don't know if it does either one better. Like, it seems kind of like a step down, and not in a bad way. You're going from an A-plus to an A kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. Like I look at that game, and for you two, based on how much you like Ghost of Tsushima and Assassin's Creed, um, <clears throat> what's the newest one? Why am I blanking on the name right now? Rush. Rush. Thank you. Uh, I can see this game working very well for you two. I'm I'm the wild yeah. card here because like because I didn't I didn't finish either of those two. This could be a similar case, but Rise of the Rona may also just be a little bit more like fast paced enough that it might actually keep my attention this time. So we'll see. That's that's my concern with this. The the two concerns I have is either one, it is too much um of a Soulsborne game, which I'm not looking forward no. to. Like I do not want this to be a Soulsborne game. And second, I worry that it's going to be too much of an action kind of like hack and slash game, which is the other thing I don't want it to be. Um, also, I, I'm hoping that this is a little bit more grounded. Like it looks like it's got a little bit of like over the topness, but I don't want it to be like fight the zombies and stuff like that. So we'll yeah. see where it goes. I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's got, got potential. It just all depends on how the reviews go. But once again, Sony, you know what's coming out March 22nd? Dragon's Dogma 2 that you literally showed like the game before this one and they have the exact same release date. Like, what are you doing, Sony? Oh, they aren't doing anything. It's Capcom and Bandai Namco that are that are having fist fights right now. Sony's just sitting there be like, that's money in our pocket regardless. You guys fight over it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's a very fair point. Oh. So before we go, like, wrap this up, like, what was your, like, for me, I felt that this was one of the strongest, if not the strongest state of play that we've had. Without question. Ever. Without like, question. If you, if you had told yeah, me like, this was a, um, a showcase, I would have been like, eh, a little weak, but I, I can see it. Yeah. This is definitely what state of play should be. And I, and I think they totally nailed it to the park, and I think this set the precedent. I admittedly forgot that there was a state of play because... I've written them off that I don't care. Like they usually are a waste of time. And this one I was watching after it got announced and I was like, wow, this is actually really good. Like, well done, Sony. Yeah. There's for the first few trailers in, I'm like, okay, eventually it's going to quiet down. And then I was like, oh, they're not doing their usual shit where they have, here's a graphic screen with some female talking like, oh, and now let's see what's going on with this one. And I'm like, it's grading after a while. No, it's just boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, okay, well, surely they're going to run out. Boom, boom. Okay, maybe now it's boom. I'm like, all right, I guess we're just going. All right, I'm here. Yeah, it was really good. It was a really good state of play. Not everything interested me, but I thought it was so well done and everything had like a good reason for being there. They were all like interesting. The pacing was great. They had the content. Like it was great. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, like no matter what niche you were in there for, like you got something and you got pretty high quality yeah. looking stuff too. It wasn't just mm -hmm. like, oh, here's your horror game, guys. No, it was like, here's a couple of them, and they look fucking good. Now, granted, Silent Hill hasn't turned out as good with the, with the free-to-play one, but at least you still got other stuff there going on. If you were into shooters, you got a couple of things there. If you're into anime stuff, you got some stuff there. And then obviously, as, you know, as we found out, if you're just into stuff that makes zero sense whatsoever, then you had almost 10 minutes of Death Stranding too. Yeah, and if you're really into foam... Even you got something there too, like <laughs> crazy. Um, I think like the, I thought it was really interesting that one of the things that they did is a lot of the games had release dates within the next two three months, or at least within twenty twenty four. That like what I can almost see Sony doing is like, hey, here's your spring lineup. We're carrying you up until April. We're gonna do another state of play in April. Here's what's coming down May June July couple of things that we got here we'll get a second showing that like didn't get one so like v rising or metro awakening until dawn remaster like hey here's when those ones are getting released and here's some more that are, you can look forward to in the fall like if they did this three times a year yeah like anything I mean, that actually got a full date didn't go past april 
the, the mm-hmm. latest yeah. one was stellar blade for april 26 everything else was february march april and if it didn't have an actual official date it was either this year or it was in development basically yeah yeah i think that's a really smart thing because yeah they could have another one like you said around you know probably april show the next few months then boom their next one is a really big one they do in like the june time where it's like non e3 time they could have one around in there somewhere yeah, i imagine we'll see one in early doing may them. i would i would guess <laughs> yeah like they could they could really keep the hype going for the ps5 because i've i've got more hype right now for my ps5 i think than i've had in a couple years like there's been the odd game but it had nothing to do with my PS5 usually. It was mm-hmm. only, I think, like Final Fantasy Remake 1 or whatever the heck that's called. Like, I think that was the last time I... Or, oh, no, Spider-Man 2. I did have Spider-Man 2 last year. But most of the other games, it was like, oh, I'm so excited for Assassin's Creed. I'm going to play that on my PS5. But it wasn't my PS5 I was excited about because I could really get that anywhere. Yeah, it wasn't like exclusive titles that. or anything. No. Like, now I'm like, damn, being a PS5 owner is going to pay off. Like, I am excited. Yeah. So... Um, so guys, we got a choice. We've been going for, I think we're about an hour now. Do you guys want to talk about Final Fantasy? Or do you guys want to save that for our side quest on Friday? Uh, I mean, well, you're not gonna be able to say much for that. Why don't we just quickly touch Final Fantasy? Because I mean, it's really just Chris, Chris and us just shooting a load for five minutes. And that's about all we need to do. If that's as much time, I, I just didn't want oh, you yeah, guys I, to we, feel we like don't need to go that long enough. over it. All right. Yeah. You guys weep out on Final Fantasy. I'll. I'm just gonna read my book. I mean, I mean, Chris. I assume you and I are in the same boat. That quite honestly, like, and 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 I know both because we both work at the same place together. We're both we're both having a, a good old time. So we're uh, we're a bit vulnerable at this point. But like, I have not felt this like emotionally, like, hit by a by an actual trailer than I was in this. Like, I actually was like nearly welling up. Like, I was so like, just like shaky and just really excited for what I was watching because. There, there's the part of me that looks at what we got in the trailer and goes, there's no way this is all here and it's perfect. But there's also the part mm-hmm. of me that's like, oh my God, someone's actually going to come out with a game that is this rich, this deep, and it's actually going to be incredible. So there's like the, there's the part of me that's like, this, this could be game of the year, but also, oh my God, this could get fucked up so bad. There's like so much going on. This might be too much. I, I, that my first thing that I was thinking, besides of having the exact same emotions as you, I have no idea why I was getting emotional during this because it's a state of play trailer. Like, normally I don't get emotional for this kind of stuff. I don't know if it was the music, the nostalgia, just the fact that it's like we just had a state of play and now we're having this state of play. I'm overwhelmed. Like, I don't know what it is, but yeah, this looks incredible it's probably the music let's be honest i'm big on the music um that's probably helping but the the big thing that i was thinking is this is going into a lot more of the game than i was expecting because final fantasy integrate or 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 remake or whatever they that it was uh end up being called um that one was not much of the game they took a part of the game and then added a lot to it where this it seems like hey all that other stuff you felt like we missed from the games here's a whole lot of the different locations a whole lot of what's going on and you're going to be going to all of it yeah the world map was like oh my god there is so much here and then then they showed here's what here's like a brief glimpse at all of these sections of the world map i'm like oh my god there's so much in this how is this all going to function but everything they showed that i'm like okay there's going to be some dead spots on these maps it's impossible not to but you also think of how every map was constructed in, in the first remake. Most of it was like, yeah, there's a couple of odd spots here, but you're not spending that much time in there. So it's not like you're wasting too much time either. There's not a lot yeah. of backtracking either. So you're not like required to, to constantly go back to stuff. And all this, like, it, it's it's just a matter of, and, and I guess all the mini games is the part that's kind of like making me go, is there maybe too much going on? But then I also just remind myself that you're playing a Yakuza game right now where there is way too much shit in there and you're having a blast. So you know what? It might still be fine. Yeah, because the original game had all the mini games and people loved them. And it's kind of like you'd go through a bunch of them once, but you didn't have to keep playing them. It was just if you wanted to ever go back and play the mini games, you could. And uh, they all looked really fun from what I was seeing. Whatever it is going on, where they go back into the PS1 pixel graphics versions of themselves. Yeah, whatever that is, like they like Tifa's got her triangle boobs back, like everything's <laughs> back to the way it used to be. 
Yeah, like whatever that is, I am so fucking stoked for that part. Like I cannot wait to play whatever mini game requires me to go back into PS1 graphics as the characters. And you could see Barrett in the trailer was like visibly like shocked that he was turned into this. So I feel like this is some virtual reality thing there yeah, or some something. Weird I don't know. Thing. I, I know you're going to be spending way too much time though in that card game. Oh, that card game. Card games in games is my weakness. Like I've, I've got it in Witcher. I've got it in Final Fantasy. Like if there's a card game in a game, I don't finish that game for a long time because I'm too busy card gaming. Um, and yeah, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I hope it has a remake of the triple triad music. Oh my God. <laughs> like I was so into that. Oh, I, I guess the only other thing that I wanted to say um, before we before we end this one off is that they're doing a hell of a job. And this is where my conspiracy brain goes on. They're trying really hard to sell it to you that Mm, they're trying to change fate, but Aerith is still going to go. Yeah, I don't know. I which, don't know. Which is they're still making me go, that. you're trying to trick me, aren't you? I'm not falling for yeah. it. Which is just, yeah. again, keeping the hype train going, because you're all like, well, they're really selling hard that they're going to still stick to parts of the old story, but what if they don't? And it just yeah. keep, and that's the part that what I'm so excited for about Rebirth, and I've said so many times on the show, is the fact that I have no goddamn idea what they're going to do. Yeah, I got no idea. I did see Cloud fighting a guy uh, from the first game that's on his motorcycle, that other soldier, in like mm -hmm. a coliseum. And literally the motorcycle is flipping at him and then he manages to stop it with his sword like they're battling their energy against each other. That was fucking awesome. So unrealistic. But like, I don't know what it was about that. I was like, this is the nonsense I'm here I for. I mean, Cloud is holding a, basically a 500 pound sword. Like, it's fine. Yeah, but it was like Dragon Ball Z, where their like energies were fighting against each other, like their gravity momentum is still both going. Except it won't Ugh. take five episodes for it to resolve. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. There will be more of this game, Adam. We do not know. Um, I will admit also the like the, the graphics, like the I, like the character models always look good to me. I don't know how much they've changed. I have to go back and look at the other game, but the environments. Yeah, like I think that's where the major changes are coming in. Holy crap, like they're insane looking. Just like the draw I look distance at some of too, which is insane. Yeah, makes no sense. Like this is a PS5 game and I get it. They got to focus on one console so that, yeah, that makes it a lot a easier lot. in development, but holy crap does this look like a game I'm going to get lost in for way too long. Way too long. But like I'm here and for And Kalen's going to totally want. ignore. Yeah, Kalen, Honestly, you're going to He's looking all of this stuff and being like, "Yeah, it looks pretty, but I don't give a shit." This is just like I am having the biggest like existential crisis because on the one hand, this looks like a super cool story where it's like, you know, eco terrorism against like, you know, this kind of cool plot. The characters look awesome. I'm like, cool, I can go for this. Like the you're fighting the man, cool. Kalen. I, like I'm all into that. And then I'm fucking hanging out with Tony the Tiger and some cat like going jet skiing. Like, I, I How just do you can't, not like, like that. <laughs> The tone just seems to go back and forth, and I don't know if I'm, like, supposed to take this seriously or if it's just, like, stupid bananas, like, makes no sense. And I just, I don't like the swing of the tone, and it's like, on the one hand, I'm like, yes, this looks like, for me, this is totally my thing. And then, nope, here we go with the Moog, and I'm like, what the hell is this? He called it a Moog. <laughs> do I know what it is? It's a a Moogle or a Mog, I don't know. Oh, it's, it's, it's a Moogle and Mog. Did I just do a name, slur right? in Final Fantasy? Yeah. Like, and like the pixel thing, like, what is body? Like, oh, that's a throwback. That, that's, that's an homage. A throwback to, yeah, that's an well, homage. That's to the the oh, oh, Chris, you played Integrate, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, that that they must be getting, they actually must be getting put into that uh, tabletop game from Integrate. Oh, that's I just, what it is. I never oh, noticed it the first time. We just passed it in the video again, and I'm like, oh, that's literally the gameplay of the tabletop game they had. We got like a yeah. giant rock person talking. Like, it's just which way is this oh, game going? Oh, Kalen, and just, if you play the first game, you fight a haunted, a giant haunted house. Yeah, like that. Just it goes back and forth. I'm like, you're so close, and they're like, nope, never mind, I'm out. Like, I like how um, Tifa and Aerith, like they're they're in Casa de Sol or whatever. So everybody's in their it's the bathing suit episode, obviously of the game. Um, also, everybody turns into frogs in the game to play Fall Guys. Um, and 
They they change into their bathing suits or their like skimpier outfits, even though like the entire. I was gonna say I saw that. And went, I'm pretty sure that's about as much skin as Tifa shows normally, so that's not like, really changing much. I'm pretty sure Tifa put shorts on. Like that's more clothes <laughs> than she was wearing. Um, but they ask Red Thirteen, "How do we look?" And he gets fucking embarrassed. Like, dude, you're not human. Like I've never looked at. Like I'll walk to my shower naked, and like my dog will be look at me. And at no point does a dog go like, "Oh." But your dog I'm doesn't sorry. have a British accent, Chris. Oh, you've got a point there. It could be that. It could be the British accent. Maybe your dog, maybe your dog actually does think that, but just can't vocalize it. How it can't feels. Vocalize like, it. Really? Yeah. Again? <laughs> Like, put it away, man. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, to, but also, just to care? sum it up. He's a, he's a tiger. He doesn't care. I've seen animals, like, lick their balls in front of me. Like, they've got no shame. Like, why would he care if they're, like, scantily clad? Yeah, I don't know. It's just Japan, man. It's just, it's what you got to do. You got to feel the embarrassment of the hot girls. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just, like, on the one hand, I'm like, oh, man, this looks like it might be for me. Like, a hard-hitting, like politics kind of driven like social mess like and then it's like nope we're frogs now and it's like i'm out i love that there's always an excuse in these games to change the girls outfits at some point in the story and make a big deal about it like they found some clothes and changed That's why i appreciate yakas though they were like we're giving everybody stuff in fact the guys have more skimpier stuff than the girls do <laughs> yeah well i mean it's Hawaii, it's man. You're on the beach. yeah right well you man <laughs> that's real equality I mean, that's what we got to do skimpier everyone but I mean, really, to really just sum it up, like, I think you you and I both agree that we are going to be really sad when we don't play this right at launch date, because I have a pretty good feeling I'm not going to be able to finish Yakuza in time. If I mean, it's any consolation, Adam, none of us are playing this on launch day. <laughs> you notice that I didn't mention you, so you stay out. Hey, I still fall in this category. I'm not playing this on launch day. <laughs> Shoo. <laughs> Shoo. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to be... I'm on my honeymoon and you and me were joking with a couple of other friends. Like maybe I should cancel like get I, a portal. Get, get a, a portal. portal. Yeah, that's true. I don't think I should do that on my honeymoon. I still think that that will lead to bad things. Um, also, but, yeah, you like, play, you're playing that on a TV. Don't you dare put that on a portal. No, no, no. I'm definitely playing that on the TV. Um, but yeah, I got to wait. It's only three days, but I feel like it's going to be a really freaking tough three days. I'm going to be like, what the hell? Like, Yeah, depending on where I'm at the last week like leading it. up to that date, I might just look at Yagaza and be like, yeah, I think I could bummers the rest of the story. I don't think I need to finish everything. Yeah. But your island, you have to make it perfect, Adam. Look, there, there may just be a cutting point. I might have to stop. Yeah, probably. For Final Fantasy VII? Yeah, I would agree. I guess I'll finish up Gravity Rush real quick and then play. <laughs> Speaking of finishing up, that's where we're going to wrap up this show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like that and you want to see more, we have a ton of episodes for you to catch up on. You can find them wherever you get your podcasts or searching for Pixel Play Podcast on the YouTubes and subscribing there. Once again, we'd really appreciate it if you did. If you want to be part of our group, we might be getting together and playing some Helldivers. I'm kind of feeling that itch. You can find us on Linktree, so linktr.e forward slash Pixel Play Podcast. Join us on the discords. We're on Instagram. We're on X. We're wherever you want us to be. Uh, we're not super involved in the other ones, but we're definitely on discord. You can join us there. We've got a great group of fans uh, who we like to talk and interact with. And we'd love to have you there as well. With that, we'll see you guys next week. Bye for now.